Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Happy Wednesday, Now That's Something Good podcast, friends. We are so glad that you are here. We really are. I know I say it a lot, but Will and I mean it so much, having so much fun sharing stories. It just brings us a lot of joy, and we are really grateful that we're getting to partner together in this and be able to share stories um, each week or every so often with you guys. Today is the long awaited for part two of our conversation with our friends at Freedom House. As we said, if you if you're tuning in, this is the first episode you're hearing, I want to encourage you go back and listen to the last episode with Gary and Susan. They kind of set the tone for what Freedom House is, share their incredible story with us. Today we are gonna hear from Dennis, Brad, and Brian. They are gonna share with us their stories. And let me just tell you. It's powerful and it's moving. And we've always said here, when we share stories, like there's just so, there's something that happens when we open up and we're a little vulnerable and we share parts of our stories. It really does open the way for other people to share parts of their stories. And you are going to get to hear that today. As we told you last week, the audio quality is a little different. So bear with us on that just because we were recording in outside of our studio in our living room with a live studio audience. So you'll also get to hear other people in the background, which is a lot of fun, but we are so glad you're here. So here we go. Here's my conversation with Dennis, Brad, and Brian. I would say something good is what's happening right now. God has uh, given us an opportunity to be with you guys, and you guys are like an extended family to us, and we want to thank you guys. And the, it, It's good to be able to, to, to do what we're doing right now to, to glorify the Lord. And uh, as, as Susan said, there's something good in each of us, mm-hmm. and each of us have a story. And, yeah. Uh, that's good. That God is good. good. That is Definitely something good. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. So I'm going to shift over here. Y'all on listening can't see me move, but we're in our living room at the good house and I've got Dennis, Brad, and Brian. Brad and Brian were looking at me for a minute because I got their, they're both B names and I called the wrong one, the wrong name earlier and I feel really bad, but now I got it straight. I said it right, right? I got it right. So I'm just going to go down the line. Dennis, I'm going to start with you. You get to be in the hot seat next. So Dennis, thanks for being here with us. Um, Last minute, I said I kind of tricked these guys. I was like, come over for dinner and come be on the podcast. (laughs) Um, They've been working really hard on our project for us at Tourist Church. But Dennis, tell us just a little bit of your story, how you got to be at Freedom House and as much or a little of it as you want to share. Pull that microphone. Yeah, there you go. Can you hear me? <laughs> All right. Uh, I had a pretty good childhood. I grew up right. I went to church. I was on the Bible quiz team. Uh, like, I I knew who Jesus was. Yeah. But when I was probably 13, 14 years old, uh, the pastor of the church, he, you know, announced in church that he'd been cheating on his wife. And, you know, shortly thereafter, my grandma died. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just got really angry yeah you know it's like why is this happening to me in my life you know and yeah so I just went the other way you know and I, I started you know using drugs and and drinking which was the real problem you know yeah. the booze and uh like that just I mean it, it was fun at first supposedly that's yeah. what I you know that's what I told myself yeah but uh you know I that went on for 20 years you know and then, uh, like, there was a point where I, I started praying, you know, for the Lord to, you know, help me. Yeah. And, you know, I think he he was helping me. I just didn't know it, you know, because, uh, like, he let me get all the way to the bottom because, mm-hmm. like, I've just been a know-it-all my whole life. So, I mean, if, if he would have done something, then it, it would have been me, you know. I, yeah. I did that, you know, yeah. and I wouldn't have, you know— Gave him the glory for it, but uh, I don't know. Right before I came to the mission, um, I was I had ended up in the hospital from from drinking too much, mm-hmm. and they told me my liver was shutting down. Okay, and that wow. I need to call my family because I'm probably not going to make it through the night. Wow. <clears throat> so I called my mom, I called my dad, and my sister, and you know I. You know, I got so bad that nobody showed up, mm. you know? Yeah, that's hard. But, like, 
he had other plans anyways because obviously I made it through the night. Yeah, yeah. That didn't that didn't make a difference because I left the hospital and went to the liquor store. Okay. Which is terrible. You know, and then a few months later I'm you know, I'm 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 living in a motel and I can't pay for the room anymore. So mm-hmm. uh my uncle is a preacher and he called me up out of the blue. I guess he'd probably been talking to my mom because she I'd been talking to her and she was like, You can't come here. Hmm. You know. So he calls me and uh he said, Are you serious about changing your life? And he gave me the number to Freedom House and I've been there ever since. Wow. And wow. You know, when uh, <clears throat> when they asked me to stay, I didn't even think about it. You know, I just knew <laughs> that's what I was supposed to do because yeah. somebody was there for me, so I needed to be there for somebody else. And That's awesome, Dennis. You know, I just love it there, so. Yeah. How many years has that been since you've been at Freedom House? Four and a half years. Okay. That's amazing. Um, tell me just a little bit more about what the program, just being a part there, finding more family kind of how what what's that's meant in your life uh it's it's pretty much meant everything to me because (laughs) like the last few years of my life before i came to the mission i was i didn't have anybody yeah i had a bottle yeah you know like the lord has restored my family because my mom didn't want to see me and now she can't wait to see me you know my awesome. daughter didn't want anything to do with me, and now she calls me every day. Hmm. You know, so love it. And Susan and Gary have treated me like family since day one. Hmm. You know, which is, I mean, it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. So, Dennis, what is your main role now at Freedom House? My main role at Freedom House now: yep. grow stuff, build stuff, and take care of the bees. I love it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> grow stuff, build stuff. <laughs> Take care of the bees. I love it. Okay, so tell me about growing stuff. What are you growing? <laughs> uh, I got we got corn and tomatoes and <laughs> I love it. Yeah, peppers and the biggest cucumbers I've ever seen in my life. And <laughs> you guys are becoming farmers out there. Yeah, I love well, it. last uh, last October maybe we put up a greenhouse. Okay, and grew stuff it. all winter. Yeah, and then we started. You know, putting stuff out in the garden this this spring and yeah, that's so cool. And then the building, uh, you've been well, you've been here with us building some things here. But why don't you talk a little bit about? You guys are getting ready for a big project at Freedom House. Can you just talk a little bit about that and what God's doing there? Well, first off, when I, I mean, I stayed on for staff. I went through the office and overseer and stuff. And then when I got out of the office, uh. Susan, mastermind over here. Yeah. She's, you know, ready to redo stuff. So I've uh, pretty much redone everything in the house. I love and it. I love it. Like room by room, we've just started and yeah, we've just been able to keep going. We built them an apartment and it's a beautiful then place. went back to the house and just done everything. Yeah. And then now, you know, we were busting at the seams. So uh, the church is going to add on to the back and we're going to we're going to finish the inside of that, and then we're going to take over one of their buildings and love it. hopefully fill up again and maybe need to build something else. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He'll just keep giving you building projects. That's right. great. And now, Dennis, I feel like I really have to ask here about the bees because this is a newer thing, right? The bees are kind of new. Yeah. What? Why bees, and how many times have you gotten stung? <laughs> I haven't been stung at all. I wear a bee suit. You wear the bee suit. Okay. But these two Brad guys. Brad and Brad are all saying they've been stung. <laughs> they get too close and got stung. Get too- <laughs> Actually, we went to uh, pick up some donations from a guy one day, and yeah. he's like, take everything out behind the barn. And we went out there, and there was a, a beehive. Yeah. So we were like, yeah, let's. we can't have a beehive and no bees. So. <laughs> So I went and talked to Susan, and she was like, yeah, let's get some bees. So I love it. I now love we it. got bees. And so have you gotten to – I don't know anything about bees, Dennis. So me, I'll tell you okay. about some bees. So I know. Well, I, feel, <laughs> Look, I know they say you're like the bee whisperer or something. I think they have a name. Is Look, that what you guys call them? It's, uh, I mean, you can – if you can't – if you don't believe there's God, watch some bees because they're, their bodies are too big. They're not even supposed to be able to fly. <laughs> like the most advanced piece of equipment that a man has ever made can only carry 25% of its weight. And a bee can hold almost its whole body weight in. That's amazing. In honey, and its wings are too small for its body. Yeah, 
if God can do something cool with beasts, he could probably do something cool with us, right? That's right. <laughs> he can do something. Have you guys harvested honey yet? Is that the right? Do you harvest honey? I don't know what the... Not yet. You know, okay. the first the first year they've got to make all the honeycomb. Okay. And so they spend all summer making honeycomb and storing up more honey for the winter. Yeah. So next year we'll probably get some honey. I love it. I'm... We're going to have to come visit you when it's honey time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Start selling it at the, the little shops around, like the Freedom House honey. I think you could be on this. That would be... Because you only have the one little beehive, right? One now, Do you have one stack? I don't yeah. know what they're called. Okay. Thank just going to have to well, have a whole hopefully little... Hopefully we're going to get some more. we got to get some more boxes because we've tried to catch a swarm already because this is just amazing too because... <laughs> Like, I've never seen a swarm of bees before. We get a beehive, and then within a week, there's two different swarms come show up in the same tree. Really? So. Okay. We were too slow to try to get the first one, but we did get the second one, you know. But That's amazing. They, they didn't stay. So. so if anybody's got any empty beehive boxes, containers laying around, reach out to us. Yeah. We'll get them to Dennis and the Freedom House people. You never know. Someone on here could have right. something. Yep. Give us your beekeeping skills. We'll, mm. we'll know. That's awesome, Dennis. Anything else you want to... Share with us about Freedom House. Anything? No, oh, it's just a it's just a wonderful place, and I've yeah. seen a lot of changed lives since I've been there. Yeah, I love it. These two knuckleheads for sure. I, <laughs> so. We're going to hear from them too. But Dennis, you got something good else that you would like to share with us? What's something good for you? Well, this is good. Like I've been truly blessed to come up here and hang out with all you mm-hmm. guys and and help out at the church this week. So awesome. Well, thank like you, Dennis. We're working, but it's a vacation for me. So <laughs> that's well. That, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, we've we appreciate you guys have done such a great great job on the building. We'll have to put pictures up so you all can see what they've been working on. Awesome. Okay. Well, if you think of anything else, you can I can come back because I might think of questions. Okay. We're gonna switch the mic over. Brad, you're up. Tell us a little bit of your story, Brad. Whatever you'd like to share with us. How did you get to to Freedom House? Well, uh, how I got to Freedom House is kind of a, a long story. You know, uh, my childhood really like was really horrible. Okay. Uh, let me just say that. Uh, foster homes. It took my mom a few years to get me back. Uh, mm-hmm. I say I, I remember the Lord like, and I don't. I didn't know the Lord for a long, long time. But I yeah. remember a lady when I was in one of them places, and she would come in at nighttime, and she'd give us back rubs, and then she'd pray for us, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember like being there like two years, and I was like, okay, Lord, if you're real, like really, like. Uh, just let me see my mom and my brothers again. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, wasn't long after that. Now, I didn't recognize that the Lord was a part of this until I come to know the Lord. Yeah. And so my mom got me back, and through everything that I had been through and what she had been through mm. as well, uh, she just let me go. Okay. I mean, not really let me go, but let me do what I wanted to do. Yeah. And for a young child, 11 years old, in Bakersfield, California, is probably not the best thing in the world. <laughs> And uh, I found myself in a lot of trouble. Okay. Um, and she blamed my friends, but she just didn't know that I was very capable of getting myself in enough trouble. I didn't need help. <laughs> uh, a long history with, uh, I-, I learned drug use and all that as a young mm-hmm. child. Right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. so once I was old enough to kind of get around it, I, that's what happened. Okay. And uh, so uh, we, I was, in a, I was in trouble. They were going to send me. To youth prison in Cal- in Los Angeles, and my mom said, "No, we're not having that." And she moved me to Granite City, Illinois, when I was 15. Okay. And that's where she was raised at. And uh, so for three years there, I went to high school. I got, got kicked out of high school my senior year. All you know how it goes, right? Just the same story. Yeah. And yeah. I went back to California for a few years, two years, 18, 19, 20. I come back when I was 20, and right. I was done with. I thought I was done, right? I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to go back to the Midwest where life is slow, and I'm gonna, I'm just going to be normal yeah. like everybody else. That's but that's not what happened, right? So <laughs> I met my wife, and uh, two years after meeting her, uh, we had a son, okay. Bradley. And uh, and when he was born, just before he was born, I married her before she was born. And, like, my parents weren't married, so I didn't know, like, this marriage thing. I just yeah. knew. I've always heard that that was, well, you got you to gotta, you gotta make this right, right? She need to marry her. Yeah. So that's what I did. And uh, I said I was done with the with the whole drug life and everything that I was involved with. Yeah. And uh, it lasted for a little while. I moved from Granite City, Illinois, to this side of the river, out to Ellsbury, Missouri. And uh, ended up, I stayed there for a while, worked for Superior Home Products, uh, about Taylor was born. I got really involved heavy with methamphetamines. Okay. And uh, before I realized what happened, I ended up in federal prison. 
and I lost everything. Mm. And that was uh, probably the toughest part. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because that was my little family. You know? mm-hmm. That's uh, Even though I was doing stuff on the other side of it, I had something to come home to. Yeah. And when I got out, I didn't have nothing to come home to. Yeah. And that's where, uh, I'll say, the addiction really grabbed all of me at that point. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I guess the best decision that I ever really made, right, was that I knew when I got out of prison that I wasn't right, and I was really mad at everything. Yeah. And I let my parents adopt my, both my kids. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, and which turned out to be a good thing. You know, uh, I had my little, I was in, an, in and out of their life, right? And I used to remember always telling them they would be mad at their mom. And I would say, look, you can't be mad at your mother. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You can't be because, like, uh, I'm no different. Mm-hmm. The only difference is, is I, you see me more. You know what I mean? That's the only difference. Yeah. I'm still living the same life. Yeah. And uh, at the end of it all, my mom got diagnosed with hepatitis C and uh, 27 years, stage four cirrhosis. Wow. Uh, they don't know if she's going to live right. And uh, I had took a job, and I went out to Arizona and California. And in between there, I had overdosed on heroin, and like uh, it was bad. I was in a hospital five days. Mm. I had some, some septic infection, too. I had just had a hernia surgery just before that. Wow. So they kept me in the hospital, and like they just told me to pretty much, like, we don't even know how you're alive, but you're here. <sighs> and... Uh, so through that, uh, the relationship that I was in at the time, I mean, she, she found me dead, you know, so that look that she has in her eyes, there's no, you can't get past that no mm-hmm. more. And I took a job and I went out to Arizona and California. I'd gotten saved at my grandma's church in Granite City, Illinois. <laughs> and I think that I was like, really like, at that point, I was really broken. Mm-hmm. And I, even I didn't know like that, that's what it took. I, I had no clue. Yeah. And, uh. So I went to church and I got baptized and we was going to church and then Vicky didn't really like that church or whatever and she didn't want to go so I stopped going and I found myself out in California and I think that's the worst that I ever got mm. uh, when I had come back from California and I was back in Granite City I ended up in a county jail for some probation stuff and uh, I remember it was just different right I was like yeah. this is horrible like I don't even belong here no more like something's wrong these guys are crazy and I'm not no more mm-hmm. I mean like I don't even like this yeah. And uh, so I remember asking the CEO, I was like, look, I'm like, can we go to church? Like, <laughs> we can do something, you know what I mean? And yeah. he's like, well, if you can get these guys in here just to get at least five of you to go. And I didn't think it was going to happen because it just didn't like, you know, they were cussing at the CEOs and, you know, throwing yeah. stuff and just yeah. had just name just how jailhouse stuff goes. And I was like, hey, will you guys sign us thing so we can go to church? And like everybody in there did. So I was like where the Lord really started showing mm. up that I was like aware of because I was like, this is unbelievable. Yeah. And wow. uh, when I talked to that pastor guy there, I was like, look, uh, I was like, I don't know exactly what I'm doing here, but I just know that this is where I'm supposed to be. Right. Yeah. And uh, he's like, well. He's like, have you ever tried anything disciplined? And I was like, well, hold on. I don't know about this discipline stuff, but (laughs) is there a way to know the Lord without that? And he's like, well, just read this pamphlet. And I was like, all right. And, you know, I read this pamphlet, and it's kind of funny because it was a a pamphlet just like Freedom House. Okay. But it was from uh, Jerseyville, actually, where Miss Susan is from, her family is from, right? Okay. uh, so I read the pamphlet and it's talking about this overseer. She come from New Jersey and she had her kid there and like she was she was done with the overseer and been out once and then come back with her kid and it was like I was like oh this has got to be the place right and I remember writing a letter to my mom and telling her look I know you're gonna think I'm crazy and but I got to go to this place I got to go find out what this is about yeah and uh, I, I I came into Mission Teens in 2016 okay uh, to Mark Tree Arkansas uh, God's New Life. Okay. And I, I stayed faithfully for three and a half years, and uh, I can just say this, that, like, I didn't know my friends that I had that knew I was going. I remember them saying, like, how do you know that you're not going to get down there and they're not going to have red Kool-Aid? And I'm like, well, look, this is one thing that I know for sure, right? For everything that I've been through in my life, if this is God really leading me, yeah. he's not going to lead me someplace that's going to be harmful to me. Yeah, that's good. And I don't know how I knew that, but I just knew that. Yeah. So I got to God's new life, and I just stuck it out. You know mm-hmm. I mean, like, I didn't, like, I wasn't going to leave. Yeah. Right? I've been through all this stuff in my life, and I was like, wow, it didn't take me long. Like, I might have been, I don't know, maybe I might have just turned trainee. And when I realized I got the concept in my mind, and it has to be God, because you read your word every day, and you pray, and you're doing all this stuff. And I was like, just watch it. I'm a very good watcher mm-hmm. and listener. And uh, I was like, man, you know what? 
this this program is not eight to ten months. Mm. This program is overseer, right? Yeah. That's the full commitment. In my mind, that's the way I looked at it was like, okay, you go through this eight to ten month part, but then there's a, there's a staff training, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so after the staff training, and then you get all the way through the AC and FC, which is yeah. senior and dean, and then you do the overseer. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, if you get through overseer, then that means then now – if you do decide to go back, that yeah. you'll be able to operate and know how to ap- operate with a household with a bunch of dysfunctional people, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and and have some balance in it, and that's so yeah. I just stayed, and uh, I didn't really have a whole lot of problems. Uh, I'll say this: in my first year being there, uh, my son learned a lot of bad habits from me, hmm. uh, and he was in a, he was in a mess, and I. I remember telling the Lord, like, look, God, <laughs> just let him be the father that I never was. Hmm. Hmm. And he did it. <laughs> Praise God. That's- so, uh, I remember, like, uh, he had called me. It was like 18 months before I seen him, before my family ever come down and see me at all. And they said, uh, he, was, he was with my mom. And, and I was like, he's like, oh, dad, I'm sober. And I'm like, well, how sober really are you? Yeah. Because I've done this before. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, oh, I'm sober. And I was like, well, if that's the case, then sounds like prayer's been working. And he was like, God didn't have nothing to do with that. Hmm. You know, and uh, his testimony is kind of funny because he's like, he just kept saying Jesus to me, Jesus to me. But I was just like, I didn't really press him. And he did end up coming to the mission and he didn't stay the first time. Like he was stayed there for a while, had some yeah. problems, went home, and he come back. And uh, he graduated the program over there. And uh, mm. Gary Gary says this all the time. He says he told him uh, one time in the office that he needed to get serious, and that uh, he would be glad to marry. He, I guess Bradley had told Gary. He said, "Look, if uh, if I do this thing, will you marry me in Amber afterwards?" Mm. And that's what happened. Wow. Uh, and how I got to Freedom House when they got married, I left God's new life. Okay. And I went back home, and He left the mission at the same time, right? And you think, yeah. oh, this is a great end for great, great, great end for a family, right? Yeah. Well, it is. Uh, in my mind, I thought, well, you know, uh, we'll go home at the same time. He's got a little family. I'll be around him. We'll spend time together. But that's not what happens in the real world. Hmm. He's got a family of his own, and I'm with my daughter. I'm staying where where they live now with my daughter and her boyfriend, and everybody's got jobs, and they got stuff and family just to do stuff, and I'm yeah. by myself. Yeah. And uh, I'm not supposed to be by myself. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that's a. <laughs> it's not good it's for good me. It's good to realize, right? yeah. It's yeah. not good for me, and I, I realize that today. And uh, when I got to the end of myself, uh, Gary, first time I ever hear my testimony at any banquet, mm. was the only person who came and talked to me. Afterwards. And that uh, has always meant a lot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, so when I got to that point, I was like, I just texted him on, on face, Facebook Messenger. I was like, hey, man, I need to come back. And, you, man, that's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, so they told me, "Come on, yeah, right." And it's yeah. a big ordeal because they're like, "You mean like, because you you have yeah, it? You learn a deep love for people <clears throat> uh, when you come to know the Lord." It's yeah, not like, "Oh, I love you," and well, hope you hope you get hope you get better. Yeah, but it's no, I love you, and I'm going to help you get mm. better. Uh, it's a big it's difference. Good. That's good. And uh, so they they took me in, and uh, look, it wasn't easy. <laughs> the second time coming through the program is is is. For me, it's harder. Like, yeah. And I'll say because I had more time in the mission after okay. staff training and all that was longer than the program. So I have to go back through it all over again, even though it was kind of fast. It was like horrible. <laughs> it took all of the Lord, right? Yeah. I mean, it, took, it took me me just like saying, all right, Lord, no matter mm-hmm. what it is, this is what I'm going to do because yeah. I know this is what he's called me to do. Mm-hmm. I don't. There's no reason for me to go back to the world. I can't find contentment in it. Yeah. Uh, the enjoyment I get from life today is using whatever the Lord's blessed me with to help other people mm-hmm. and to do whatever it is he puts before me. Yeah. And so I've been back now a little over a year, hmm. and uh, it's the best thing that's ever happened, right? Brad, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all of that. I Man, that's <laughs> so good, powerful. I think there's going to be a lot of people wiping their eyes right now listening <laughs> to the the story. And then, so Brad, tell me, what is your kind of role now at Freedom House? Well, right now I'm over uh, donations. 
Uh, basically, people call in and they donate to the mission. Yeah. And I schedule my time or a pickup, and we'll go pick their stuff up, and we'll bring it back to the mission. And uh, we have yard sales once a month, or sometimes more if, if there's more than stuff than what we have. Yeah. So we have a 52 foot trailer that uh, gets filled up in no time, and then we got all these tarps that we put the stuff underneath the tarps, and it's uh, I love it. It's uh, been a real blessing for me because the people, uh, they're broken. And I get a chance. I get a chance to minister or talk to people, and it's like, yeah, uh, you learn how to live this. It's not just a talk, yeah, right. It's actual. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a living a living skill. Yeah, and it's all the Lord who owns it. I don't pick and choose who He puts before me. Yeah, He puts the people before me, and I just it, I just tell them about what what's happened in my yeah. life. Yeah, uh, and it's it's a testimony in itself. I don't have to do nothing. The Lord does it. Yeah, uh, and then I work on the vehicles whenever uh, something that I've always. Enjoy doing. Yep. Uh, I love it. The best part about it is it's like I'm a pretty much a people person. <laughs> and I like being around the people. So like I spend a lot of time with the residents. Yeah. And there's nothing better for me than to see someone come in and be like not real sure what's going on in their life. Mm -hmm. And the light come on in their eyes. Hmm. Uh, that's that's the best part of all of it because I was that person. Hmm. My children were that was was that was in people and yeah. uh, for anybody who has kids or family members who are struggling, all they want is that person back. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, huh. Brad, that's amazing how God has just worked all that worked in your life and you've been surrendered to Him when lay it all down. Right, He'll do amazing things. I don't have to do nothing except for wait on him, right? Yeah. Like I just I just do the next right thing. We just wake up in the morning, I read my Bible, I say some prayers, mm -hmm. and I go on about my day. A lot of times I spend t talking to this guy next to me in the morning, <laughs> Brian, because we both kind of get up early in the morning, so yeah. we spend a lot of time early together. Early risers doing the... Yeah, talking about the Word or something, yeah. always something in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, tell me just a little more about the yard sales, because this is such a huge part. I love a Freedom House, too, just to... Because Susan you, you had mentioned that... There's no necessarily regular income. It is everything operates, survives, and functions because of donations, gifts, how the Lord provides, right? Yes. And so these yard sales, tell us why you do them, all that. Well, the yard sales pretty much, uh, it's not, I mean, we, we have to function, but uh, yeah. the yard sales are really an opportunity, uh, even though it is like for, to support the ministry. Yeah. Uh, it's it's mostly we the residents in a program they get to go out there and be a part of it and we encourage them to pray for people hmm. and a lot of times I, I I don't even give them like a half a half a chance kind of most of the time I'm just like hey come here and pray for this person and I'll just say go I mean just go ahead and pray yeah. I mean because if I if if I give them, if I tell them beforehand then they will get all nervous and scared yeah when if it yeah. just happens it's like more natural and the Lord has a chance to operate in that absolutely it works well. Uh, That's great. But all the people that come through, they get to see something and experience something that they've never experienced before in their life. Yeah. I mean, we set up 25 to 30 tables and they're covered with stuff. <laughs> I mean, we're talking eight foot tables, right? I, I love mean, it. I love it. Piled up with stuff. That's you name it, it's there. <laughs> and, and that's Polar not to mention this yeah. 40 yard tarp with four foot of clothes on it. And I'm talking name mm -hmm. brand tags on the clothes. Wow. And then you got all the furniture. And I mean, this is not like furniture that you, we're talking nice stuff. Yeah. And yeah. it's amazing that to me that like, I remember last year when I first came in and it was like hot and I was miserable, <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, like three days, we filled up this 52-foot trailer, and I was like, this is like beyond anything that I've ever seen, like, right? And so a year later, it's still happening, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that, the Lord don't stop. Can I just say one thing? Yes. I've, I've been here for four and a half years. I don't know where all this stuff keeps coming from. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps showing up. <laughs> Every month. Sometimes twice a month, sometimes three times a month, the trailer is full and we've got so much stuff in the yard, you can't hardly walk through there. That's amazing. That's crazy. Well, our, our town is only 500 people. That is, <laughs> if that is not a testament of something, it's just like it just keeps refilling up. It never goes empty, right, mm -hmm. the trailer? That's faith. That's I love that. Big, big faith. Yeah. I love it. So if you listening are big yard sale fine, like love yard sales, it would be worth the drive to Holcomb, Missouri. Go check out their yard sale or they, what they just did it right. Memorial Day weekend. It's the hundred mile. Uh -huh. So go check this out. Come go see Freedom House. See our friends. Tell them now that something good sent you. 
and let them pray for you and find some good finds. <laughs> we have we have one starting next Wednesday. Do you really? Okay, next yeah. Wednesday. Okay, we'll, make, we'll, we'll list some dates on that. We'll ask you. I'll put them in the show notes so people know when to come to the yard sales. But that's awesome, Brad. So you've shared a lot of good things already, but do you have anything else, something good you want to share with us? Uh, yeah. See, this is hard for me sometimes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Emotions are good. It's here. We're, we, we tears are good. It's just good to be able to use my abilities that the God of the Lord blessed me with hmm. to use them for good hmm. and not for bad, like I did for so yeah. many years. It's awesome, Brad. That's definitely something good. That's good. Yeah, that's really good. Thank you for sharing that, Brad. That's awesome. Perfect. We're all clapping around here. So many good things. And we got one more. It's like the amazing stories just keep coming. This, people don't know what they were getting in for this episode. And now that's something good. They didn't know they were getting all the things. So Brian with an I, not a Y. I feel like, Brian, we just need to start off with you. Let's make sure this is close enough to you, though. Hold that hand close to him. I need you just to tell your thing you already told me about Brian. So, I mean, we love everybody, every name, all the things. But what did you tell me about Brian's who don't spell their name with an I but with a Y? Well, we drive up down uh, Brian Road or Brian Street, but it's spelled with a Y. Mine's spelled with an I. And I grew up with a Brian it was spelled with a Y. I knew him all my life, kindergarten all the way through senior, you know. And um, I used to always tell him that, you know, that's just because your mother... And Dad wanted a girl. So, <laughs> you, they spell your name with a Y. So, I think that's uh, great. I love it. Some funny games. I've you know I played sports with him, and yeah. we, were, but we were buddies. But uh, that's what it. I've always said. I love it. So. That's great. Well, Brian, tell us a little bit about your story, as much or as little as you want to share with us. But tell us your journey and what God's been doing, and how you ended up at Freedom House and now sitting on my couch. <laughs> um, well, I mean that story is. Uh, it can be long. Uh, um, I was raised right, like a lot of people here. I mean, I was brought, I was drugged to church, um, <laughs> and uh, uh, and I'm thankful for it now. Mm. I think I res- kind of hated my parents for it then. I uh, wanted to make my own decisions, even, uh, but just rebellious, you know. And uh, but I was a great raising, great family, and. Uh, um, if I pinpointed something that the Lord's really just shown me in this last year, uh, um, I had my whole life planned out. I had a high school sweetheart, and uh, I joined the Coast Guard, and we were going to travel and have kids. And uh, um, I was, went to boot camp, got stationed in Boston, and uh, we had a wedding date. And 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 she, a friend called, and she was cheating on me. And and to mm-hmm. be honest, it, it I know it's maybe sappy, but it like crushed me. Yeah. It broke my heart. It's really yeah. like I made these decisions, and uh, I never really knew it. But at that point, I was angry, mm-hmm. um, and uh, angry at the at the world um, and and God, you yeah. know. And uh, and I just went on a tear. Mm-hmm. Um, I still worked and did a lot of a lot of things, and, and uh, but just wanted to live the life of a bachelor, and and um, it just always escalates. Yeah, you know. Uh, from through the whole gauntlet of drugs and alcohol and everything else. Um, what brought me to Freedom House started back in 08. Uh, the one story I will tell, uh, I was in some people, you can take it, take the story how you want, but one yeah. night I was sitting in a place and I'd been there a week or two and I'd know, you know, been up for those couple of weeks and, uh, a guy was on the couch with me and told me about Mission Teens. Hmm. Um, I don't know where he came from, and I don't know where he went. I know that he never did any drugs with me. Um, and the next day, I headed out and left, hmm. uh, walking in the middle of Alabama and the, and the country. Uh, the closest place that I could get to was probably 10 or 12 miles away uh, was a police station. And I uh, walked in and told the lady I needed to use the phone. And um, she, she kind of remembers she cocked her little head, and I said, ma'am, I said, uh, I, said I need help. Hmm. And she looked at me, and she goes, do you think? You know? <laughs> um, like, yeah, been I'm up a couple of weeks, and, and, you know, and I'm walking into the police station. And she let me use the phone, and my sister came and picked me up. And within a week, I was in Crossville, uh, okay. Mission Bible Training Center, same program, diff- different location yeah, in, in Tennessee. Yeah. Um, from there, I went to Kentucky's mission. And helped start that one. Okay. Uh, what they call pioneering it. Um, 
that's where I met Susan, and that year I met Susan, and I, Susan was there at that mission with me. I met Gary two or three times at Crossville and at our grand opening. Uh, the thing I can say that was when I was about thirty-two is is that what well, uh, I was I was desperate, mm. okay, because uh, I was basically homeless and I was too prideful to literally sleep on the street. Yeah, uh, just to be honest, um, and I was desperate. Uh, I met, met Jesus six days later, climbed out of my bunk, got on my knees, July 21st, 2008. Hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, he just, he, he radically changed me. Um, one of those proby stories that she was Susan was talking about, yeah. I, uh, a couple of weeks into it, you know, the drugs and stuff get out of your system. And I had this horrible toothache. Hmm. And, um, and I prayed one night and said, Lord, if you want me to stay here, you're going to have to take this, you know, because my parents had done wrote me off, which is what they had to do mm. but i knew i couldn't i didn't have no money or anything yeah. and uh i woke up the next day and it was gone <laughs> and it didn't come back for a year wow you know and i'm talking a bad toothache like swollen up and all wow. that it went away yeah and then in a year i was in kentucky and i was in a situation and obviously a family restoration i was got it to take care of mm. and that was just the lord meeting me like i'm you know uh you can't just always do that with god but god knew what I needed then yeah and then I stayed you know uh, and uh, it was amazing um, I know now that what I was really wanting was um, my old life my old to be my old person but sober mm. um, things happened uh, I made some mistakes didn't do what I was taught and I left um, I can't say that I did good for 10 years. Mm. All I did was stay sober. Um, I got married, uh, built this amazing life that I thought that I wanted. Yeah. And had my old, I was my old person, my old life, and, and everything that I ever thought that I wanted, I had. And I uh, mm. was, was still miserable. Uh, I didn't understand that the, the difference was I was Holy Spirit filled. Mm. Uh, and I quit feeding that. No. And um, but he's never going to let you go. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, once 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 you uh, ask him in your life, then then he's there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, he's only going to let you go for so long. You know. Yep. Um, some things, other things happened. Uh, I was you know in a marriage uh, that was started in sin and should have never happened, and so it obviously fell apart. Uh, uh, and. and and I went back down that road, and um, it was a whole new experience. Uh, um, you know, I've always explained it as that, you know, the Lord has you in his hand, and he has his covering on you. And I can remember the moment that, that um, when I really got back into the drugs, and I'll get into the details, that, that he really, that I know that moment he picked his hand up and, and really said, you know, mm-hmm. if you want more of this life, you can have it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's a feeling... Uh, that you'd never want to experience. Yeah. Um, uh, within months, I mean, I was, I know now too that I, I just, I just didn't want to live. Uh, I was trying to kill myself by drug overdose, honestly. Um, and turn, turn that back. I remember the moment that, uh, the Lord put his hand back on me and said, uh, said, I'm not done with you. <laughs> And when that happened is I woke up that morning and I'd reached out to Gary and Susan. Okay. Um, and on Messenger, I think she's told me it was four in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, did, I didn't really, I don't, the timeline and everything's really a blur, but, um, but you know, and it took me, I think, another day or two to reach back out. Um, and like I said, the timeline's a blur, but she knew my ex-wife at the time. And so she'd reached out to her. Uh, I think testimony to that, I believe, when you were, Susan was talking to Patricia about bringing me here, which my ex-wife I hadn't seen in six months, and she mm. couldn't stand me for good reason. Uh, Susan was with a group of people here at Two Rivers, right? Mm-hmm. I was at the Fearless Women. What? Ad- Advent service. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Were, and the, I was excusing myself to... Try to get him. Wow. Get me here. Right? <laughs> what a crazy fool. You know, 
That's funny. <laughs> that's great. God's always working it out. Working you know, it out. and that's just another thing of God always making a way. Yeah. You know, you don't have to live these crazy lives that we left to be able to look back and see yeah. these moments that mm. he's making that way. You know what I mean? He that's put good, Gary Brian. and Susan in my life because yeah. I, I don't know if I would have called another sinner, you know, yeah. but I just, I reached out on Messenger, you know, and, and they, um, basically said where are you at you know yeah and um and i you know so patricia came and got me and uh brought drug me kicking and screaming that it was uh she should have left me on the interstate uh, <laughs> uh many a times this was east tennessee so it was seven or eight hours away and mm. i was uh she had to um it just was not a good thing but i mean it, it, it you know i know that she did care i mean she brought me here i wouldn't yeah. made it you know yeah um the one uh, difference, too, though, and the difference there, when I got here this time, I mean, I, I, I was broken. Uh, and and the one thing I would say to anybody listening and I tell the residents, uh, it's always a question of why. Mm. Um, it's very clear the reason I had to go through everything I had to go through and the Lord allowed that was because that's what it took for me to come to Him. Mm. That's how much He loves us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He loved His Son, and He still put Him on the cross. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's just amazing. You know what I mean. Yeah. So to let us go through what we go through because we're his children too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. And uh, uh, but that's what it took. You know, I had to go through all of that to get to where I'm at now. Yeah. Uh, and we and to be broken. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To know that uh, not to just be desperate because I don't want to be homeless. I need a savior. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I can't do this. Yeah, you know, uh, but he can, absolutely, okay? um, and he can give me the tools and the equipment to do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's just it's amazing. I've been here coming up on two years. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and and then Brad's right. Uh, the second time's a lot harder uh, because we know the program. Even though I had a ten year gap, I still know the program. And yeah, uh, you know, I'm. Uh, like one of the mo- one of the more smartest people that I've ever met. I don't know how to say it. You know? uh, <laughs> Fair Dennis, enough. I'm one of Dennis, the smartest people. Dennis I've met. likes to say that I'm the smartest guy that I know. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, I am. That's you know what I mean? We always uh, all think we're the smartest uh, one, right? <laughs> you know, we're just prideful men. You know what I mean? And, and we're blessed. I mean, we're blessed with gifts and things, and we yeah. want to. Uh, so it's hard to be told what to do. You yeah. Know, one of the things about the structure of the programs, like you have to, certain times of the day, you got to ask to go to use the restroom, you know. Yeah. You have to ask to do this. You have to ask to do everything, you know, and that's that's difficult when you've I bet. been running your life for 45 years, you yeah. know. Or, uh, of course, I ran it right in the ground, you know. And uh, <laughs> uh, But it's, it's, it's just amazing uh, for... To watch the transformation, mm. uh, to really get on your knees and, and, and bear bear your soul to the yeah. Lord, and uh, uh, just what and just see Him and feel Him, put it back together. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, He had to uh, He had to let my let me get tore down to that point. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, and I still struggle. I mean, you know, at times I still want to. Yeah. You know, um, one of the blessings, like Gary and Susan. I mean. Just not long ago, I went to them with a question, uh, and for permission. And you know, Susan had to say, you know, Jesus is not enough right now, hmm. and that's a hard, hard pill to swallow. But it's the truth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I know I can trust and love both. You know, love yeah. them, and that's yeah. why I can go to them. And it's the council. I know you're going to ask what is good. What is good is these people. Hmm. You know what I mean? These yeah. brothers. That, that I've never had that will hmm. be there for me, yeah. you know what I mean, and friends and, you know, mentors. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, it's a bond. Uh, he said not not to be alone. You know, it's not good. The th- thing yeah. is, I kind of crave that. Uh, I'm kind of a introvert and, and need alone time, but I don't need it, yeah. you know, and yeah. uh, they give me my space, but, but they're always there, mm-hmm. and I know I can depend on them yeah. no matter what. Not that... You know, we're all flawed, you know, but, but I know that they're seeking the Lord yeah. and they're going to point me back to Jesus. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and Gary and Susan were right. I mean, yeah. at that moment, you know, 
I'm still here, you know, but Jesus yeah. has to be enough. And that's what yeah. I'm striving for. And, and and the Lord just says it's a process, you know, because I obviously went straight to my knees to, to the Lord with that. And the Lord was like, you just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. You know, yeah. the hardest thing is to wait on the Lord. Yeah. I think for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, we want what we want. We want it now. Yep. Uh, yep. Not everything that is good is of God. Yep. Um, something that I've heard in the last few months that really stuck with me, you know, and uh, he he knows what we need. Um, yeah. Um, it's it's amazing, you know, to watch what what happens in these programs and with these people. Mm-hmm. So, Brian, it's amazing. Thank you for sharing your story. What I I feel like every one of us we talk a lot here on the podcast is like sometimes we think. Um, a part of our heart was just to kind of normalize some things that everyday faith is just hard. Walking with the Lord, no matter our story, it's hard. And it is a constant having to go, Jesus is enough. <laughs> and sometimes he's more than enough than what I desire in this moment, whether it's a drink or to do drugs yeah. or watch something I shouldn't watch or say something to my kids I shouldn't say or blow up or what. I mean, fill in it with any sin. And we're real good about thinking certain sins are elevated than others, but every sin separates us from a holy God. And we all right. needed Jesus. Yep. We all needed a savior to come and take our place and bridge the gap that we would never bridge on our own. Amen. But because of Jesus, he allows us to come and he sees us clean. Um, and so something I just, I want to share with you guys, Susan, you just, you said the, you, you called, you said sometimes we were thought about as, as throwaways and it stuck with me because I think really Every person probably struggles with feeling like that, but hearing you guys just share your story, like you are nothing but throwaways. And the coolest thing is it's like, those are the people God's looking for. When we open scripture over and over, I told you our whole heart of the story was when Paul, they'd been in the council and they left and they're like, those are just ordinary men, Mm -hmm. but I can tell they've been with Jesus. And it's like, that's what we want our life to be. And it's like, man, he takes the ordinariness of all of us, the hard part the broken parts, everything. And if we allow him to come in and do what only he can do to heal and restore, he makes something way beautiful out of it and goes, I'm going to use you. And he showed that with his son, right? He could have sent, he could, right? That's why they were so confused. They didn't know who Jesus was because they were looking for this high and mighty king and they sent a baby in the middle of nowhere to be born around some cows. (laughs) Different cow story, but be born in the lowliest of ways. And that's cool because I know you guys sharing your story is blessing a lot of people. And when you're getting to pray with somebody and hear it and it's one person at a time and to share that and help encourage somebody else is what it's about. So, Thank you for being here today and being an encouragement and a blessing to people listening. Um, I had one more question I was going to ask you, and now I totally forgot what it was because we've shared so many good things. Do you guys have any other things you want to share before we just kind of close it down for this time, this episode? Anything else? Well, just want to say thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. It's been a real honor and a blessing. And I hope that you guys listening will go check out Freedom House and learn more and be encouraged today that no matter where you're at, no matter what you're walking through, you can cry out and the Lord hears you. Mm -hmm. He is faithful. He is good. And he cares for you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. So I told you, right, friends, definitely needed the Kleenex for this episode. Their stories are so powerful of just how God has taken brokenness and turned it into incredible stories for His glory. I love it. Thank you for listening to our stories, their stories today. I want to encourage you, go find Freedom House. We, in the show notes, have their website. We have their Instagram, their Facebook page. We would love for you to go follow along with them. I know it's going to bless you. And a couple things I actually want you to do. I want you to go tell them. They would just be so blessed to hear from you. So go comment on one of their pages, send them a message and say, now that's something good podcast sent you. I know they would love the encouragement. And I also want to challenge you in this. If you are a person of faith listening and believe in the power of prayer, I would love to invite you to join with us to pray for them. The work that they do, um, the restorative work that God is using them in is big and it's weighty um, and it, there's so many blessings in it, but I know it's also hard sometimes. And I know they would just covet and appreciate your prayers and your thoughts for them. 
And I also want to ask you this. They have a donate button on their website. And Gary and Susan are, you heard the stories of faithfulness, how they just have open hands and know that God is going to take care of their every need. They're getting ready to do some building projects where they're getting to expand, have more room for more people to come so that they can help and just bring life and help more people find restoration. And I think it would be really cool if we could partner together and help be a blessing to them. Maybe you give up your Starbucks drink this week and you can donate $5 or maybe there's something more than you can do. But we would love to encourage you to do that. Our family's huge fans and supporters of Freedom House and we think it would be fun if we could just share in the blessing together to continue to love on them. Well, friends, I hope that you have a great week and I hope wherever you're at, you're able to share something good and maybe share a part of your story with someone around you. As you heard us say often, you never know what God's going to do when we just open our mouths, be a little bold and share some good news and good stories in a world that desperately needs it. So go share something good with someone around you today. Have an awesome week. We'll see you back here soon. 